Good evening, everyone. My name is Fedor Antonov. I'm CEO of Anisoprint. And if you see this video, this means that my flight had further delayed and I had to record it, the, the presentation because I'm going to be late on the live event that should take place with the live presentation. So, so sorry about that. I'm currently in the airport recording this presentation uh, for and uh, uh, sorry if you will hear some noise in the background. Uh, uh, um, I've tried to find the most quiet location here. So my presentation today is about um, the new way of manufacturing composite materials through continuous fiber 3D printing and uh, in the perspective of uh, use in aerospace and um, aerospace applications. So the uh, first thing that I wanted to highlight is that light weighting, which was always the key trend for aerospace, uh, is still a very big trend and um, still the penetration uh, or the um, of composite materials in aircraft structures is quite low. And there is much, much more potential for these materials to uh, uh, get more applications in um, aerospace, mostly for making the structures lighter. Uh, so, uh, of course, composites are one of the best materials in terms of strength and stiffness or specific strength and stiffness as a strength to weight ratio, but their, uh, their um, penetration in uh, general manufacturing and even in aerospace is considered to be quite low compared to the uh, benefits they provide in terms of the unique mechanical properties. And my understanding of the reason is that the traditional manufacturing uh, technologies to manufacture composite materials are uh, having a, a lot of different limitations. They're expensive, they can produce only limited shapes, and it's, they involve difficult multi-step process. So for for composites to penetrate more, to, to get more uh, use cases, more applications in aerospace, to replace inefficient metals in more and more applications. There should be a new technology, for, a new manufacturing technology for composite materials that is much more flexible, that can manufacture much more complex shapes, and that is much more cost effective. So basically, uh, one another reason is not only about the manufacturing technologies but about the, the design approach so the way we design composite materials today is fundamentally wrong so if you look at this picture ideally theoretically uh, a unidirectional carbon fiber reinforced polymer carbon epoxy ud material uh, has uh, 10 times higher relative um, strength relative ultimate strength that would theoretically mean that with these materials you can make structures 10 times lighter but in reality that's uh, um, not uh, what we see so when we start designing when we start uh, manufacturing structures made with uh, carbon composites we uh, create so-called quasi-isotropic laminates or black aluminum where the unidirectional plies of carbon fiber material are stacked on one on top uh, another in different directions basically making this material work as if it was an isotropic material such as metal and in this case the properties are dissolved in different uh, directions and the ultimate strength uh, uh, reduces significantly so we lose most of the benefits of, of composite materials when we uh, do these black aluminum designs. And on top of that, we have lots of other issues uh, such as delamination, low velocity impact, very visible impact induced damage, uh, milling, cracks, uh, um, safety factors that are much, much higher for, for composites than for metals. So, in the end, this approach, this design approach, together with um, the limitations of the manufacturing approaches, uh, kills uh, kills all the idea of using um, such a, a, 
such a nice materials in a, a wide range of uh, of applications so the promise of these materials to bring uh, to, to make structures lighter basically is not realized because of these two topics manufacturing and design uh, in terms of design we believe that there is a better way to design with composite materials and um, instead of making laminates with composite materials it's much more efficient to make lattices lattice or geodesic structures like the one you see on the picture it's a famous Shukhov tower uh, that was built 100 years ago and the beauty of such structures is that they are made up with um, one-dimensional ribs and every rib only uh, takes the load along the rib, so there is only a one-dimensional stress um, uh, satate, which in this case makes these uh, uh, ribs only work uh, in one direction. And this is what you can also see in uh, nature, and uh, there are other examples in uh, engineering, like the famous Vickers Wellington uh, aircraft, these latest designs, uh, help to make structures uh, much much more optimal either in nature or as we can see it in the history of, of manufacturing. But actually the problem was that in, in case of Vickers Wellington that manufacturing such uh, the manufacturing process was way uh, too much inefficient. Uh, so with latest designs, with composite materials, it's even better because composite materials, they have directional properties so most of their properties are along the fiber direction so in case of lattices all the properties are along the ribs and ribs only work in one direction only along the fibers so uh, when using composites mm, together with lattice approach gives us a lot of benefits uh, in terms of design and optimization so if you make for example a fuselage with metal with aluminum then the skin stiffener approach works perfectly well but when we start making um, fuselage with composites uh, the lattices actually work much better and as i explained again the, the the beauty of combining lattices and composites is in the ability is in the effect that uh, in lattices anisotropic unidirectional carbon fiber only works is only loaded along the primary fiber direction. Uh, there is another nice example of a so-called anisogrid lattice. So um, uh, this is actually a um, payload adapter of a Proton M launcher rocket, and it's made with filament widening as an anisogrid lattice uh, structure. And you can see how much better is it compared to metal or a classical composite sandwich structure. Another approach that we uh, want to implement in our designs is so-called fiber steering. So instead of just placing the fibers always straight, in every material point you tailor, you steer the fiber, mm, you tailor the, the material properties in every point to be consistent with the uh, um, um, principal stresses with the, the directions of the principal stresses and doing that compared to quasi-isotropic laminate as it was demonstrated in this um, article by one of our co-founders professor girdle is that the variable stiffness panel can be up to two times better in terms of performance compared to the same weight same thickness quasi-isotropic laminate so this is what we call anisoprinting is combining the lattice designs with the fiber steering and uh, if you actually look on the topology optimized uh, so, uh, so structures if you try to do a topology optimization for an anisotropic material so that's what you see on the right of the page uh, your actual optimal your your uh, generative design the result of the generative design is again a lattice with a curvilinear ribs and on the bottom of the picture on, on the right you can actually see the material direction orientations obviously the material 
directions are following the directions of the ribs. So this is what we can have, um, uh, what we can foresee as a kind of an optimal design for composite materials, um, contrary to non-optimal black aluminum, black metal approach. So this is the way how optimal structure should look like. So here on the left, you will see what will happen if we would further optimize this payload adapter with uh, non-geodesical ribs uh, through the topology optimization. So it can help to decrease the, the mass of the structure another 20%. And this is what, for in the middle, for example, what you can do with fiber steering, where you can create um, the, uh, the the equal stress, equally stressed designs, equally stressed uh, set structures. And uh, here on the right is an example of a topology optimization of um, a, a wind grip of a UAV structure. Um, so now the question is, how do we actually produce composite materials today? Can we use the existing technologies to make these designs? No, the answer is no. So the, the shapes are limited for existing technologies such as filament winding or fiber uh, placement. And then there are much more complications. So the mold is required, the post curing is required, the machining is required. So to actually make these designs, we need another technology that is another that is also a part of an ISO printing concept. So this is technology that should have virtually no shape limitations, that should be um, as per our vision, a single stage, fully automated process that doesn't require tools or, or molds or curing or, 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 or post-processing or machining. So this is the ideal technology which we are uh, trying, which we are inventing, which we are bringing uh, to the market to be able to produce these optimal designs. So uh, in a hardware uh, uh, perspective, this is done with what we call composite fiber co-extrusion approach. So it's an extrusion-based technology and extrusion-based method where we mm, actually a co-extrusion where we simultaneously extrude through a nozzle a thermoplastic material so to ensure to ensure in situ consolidation in, uh, in, in situ curing uh, of part while printing together with a special reinforcing fiber um, a toe prag which is preliminary in, in, impregnated with a, a thermoset resin and fully cured so that thermoplastic actually doesn't have to impregnate it. It doesn't have to go inside the fiber toe. Uh, the fiber toe is already impregnated. So the final part, the final composite material that we can have, we call it a B matrix material, which has uh, one matrix inside the fiber toe, which is a thermoset and another matrix between the fiber toes, which is a thermoplastic. Uh, so with this, we can uh, guarantee a very good material quality with very low porosity and good fiber distribution. We can print, we can manufacture different curvilinear trajectories of fiber laying on a very high curvatures. We can use different polymers uh, as, a, as a main matrix material for different kinds of applications for like thermal stability or or chemical resistance or flame retardancy. And we can print lattices. Uh, this is the, the unique feature of the technology because of the flexible fiber volume ratio. We can actually make the intersections, the junctions of the fibers, uh, keeping the material volume constant. So basically in the intersection, the fiber volume fraction is doubled compared to the rib. So it's very important that the fibers go through the intersection and they do not stop and go, um, they are not cut, they work continuously. This is not actually possible if you do it with a fixed fiber volume fraction. So uh, as a, if you will try to do it with a pre preg with a fixed fiber volume fraction, the result will be, um, uh, will have these kind of thickness variations in junctions. So we have different products that are currently implementing this technology from desktop to industrial in, in different sizes and capable of working with different polymers, even with high temperature polymers, with different materials, with different reinforcing fibers. And we have a special software that can help to implement these complex designs. Uh, 
So to finish my presentation, there are a few use cases that we have developed throughout last couple of years um, for um, aerospace industry. So this is an example of interior bracket, so-called monument bracket, which was designed with the topology optimization approach out of a pure 3D printed composite material and the weight savings were 50% compared to the original aluminum one. This is another example of a latest um, uh, set structure from uh, the uh, early years uh, of um, an ISO print uh, of 3D printing uh, um, um, latest fins for microset launch vehicle. So you can also print these kind of grids for uh, for um, solar panel uh, for satellites, or you can print these kind of um, topology optimized interior parts such as aircraft seat supports um, mm, with a weight reduction of more than 40% compared to original aluminum one. And this is the vision of the future, which was, I, I, I think, perfectly illustrated in an Airbus A2050 design concept, which uh, actually highlights and, and shows us how the fuselage can be made with these lattices and how the, the aircraft of the future, made of course with composite materials, can look like. So uh, stop metal thinking, start anisoprinting. printing. This is our slogan. I, I, um, uh, I suppose you can understand what it means after this presentation, and I hope you will share this vision with us. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and um, you know, please feel free to answer your, um, your question if you have any. Thank you. And sorry once again for um, not being able to give this presentation live.